between space and time, there is a place, the Archive of Awesome, an ancient vault that guards the most amazing stories and myths. Each book, a magical gateway to the paperverse. Let me take you on a journey through the seven masterpieces. It's time to return to game. Hey there viewers and welcome to Book of Demons, a title that caught my eye a couple years back not just for the papercraft aesthetic but also because of its unique take on the roguelike genre. It is part dungeon crawler, part hack and slasher, and part deck builder with a sprinkling of RPG elements throughout and as of right now it is sitting on a very positive 92% approval rating on Steam. It is also apparently, as we just saw, the first game in a much larger franchise of the developers Thing Trunk are working towards building, each in a similar art style but different genre. I believe the next game in the uh, series is Book of Aliens, right, and I believe it's supposed to be more of a turn-based strategy game in the style of 90's XCOM? I'm not entirely 100% sure on that. As for this game though, a deck building hack and slasher is right up my alley and I've been looking forward to playing this for quite some time so let's just jump right into it shall we? I'll replay the intro because when I was doing the testing I had to skip past this. Ah, the Book of Demons. A truly grim story in our collection. Not for the faint of heart. A wandering hero returns home. Only to find everything different than remembered. A horrendous evil rose from the depths of hell, devoured the brave and poisoned the living with despair. For in the depths of a place once holy, a dark ritual is concluded. Arr! The ultimate evil has awoken. Adventure, darkness, horrors, all of these await below. Right, also want to note, I didn't mention this is on Steam, but it's also available on other major platforms as well. PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. So you can get them on any platform. And I believe it's currently $25 on each of those, USD, so whatever your local equivalent would be. Now there's three characters we can play as, the Warrior, the Rogue, or the Mage. However, we need to level up the Warrior first in order to do that. So... Let's just randomize the name if we can. Get a good one. A scale, sure. We'll be a scale. It's got kind of a uh, darkest dungeon type vibe to it. We're not playing casual, but I at least want to see what casual is. Cards drop in a random order that allows you to counter enemies' abilities. Combat mechanics are more forgiving, and monsters are less vicious. Healing's easier can get more challenging after completing the main campaign. And you can change this anytime, no leaderboard. Not interested. Nor I feel like since this is roguelike Tuesdays, we should go after the roguelike mode, but we're gonna stick to normal for now. What is roguelike? Totally card drop random. Limited healing. Resurrection and healing in town is increased. Without gold to resurrect, characters die permanently, so you can buy your way out of death. Ah, yes. As opposed to normal, cards drop in a random order, they allow you to counter enemies' abilities, it gets harder. Yeah, I think normal mode's fine for us. Yeah, just like the city in, or the town in Darkest Dungeon, very similar. Is that really you? I'm so happy to see you after all this time. It seems like it's been ages since you left our town. I just wish we weren't meeting under such dire circumstances. Back then, 
It was peaceful. But now, the town is disturbed by a demonic presence that's spreading throughout the land. Most of our friends are gone. Some people fled. Some took their own lives. Some have just vanished. Those who stayed have lost their minds or are too frightened to leave their houses. I'm doing my best to keep everyone's spirits up. But the truth is, we won't survive for long without help. Just don't tell anybody I said that. You must have lots of questions, but I don't have many answers. Talk to the sage if you want to know more. He might be able to help you. First thing to note, thank you for being fully voice acted. That's going to save my throat tonight. Oh, miss me already? Okay, so, gossip. We can buy a golden key for 25000 We're flat broke with only 100 bucks. I don't think we can do anything with those tabs yet. Sure, let's talk to her. Oh, welcome. We've already done that. Is that really you? I'm so happy. Yeah, to we've see already you. done that. So, talk to the next guy. Let's see if we can build up this town. Your arrival brings hope to my old heart. There's no better way to forge one's skill than by traveling. I should know. <laughs> but I beg you not to leave. We need you here. Dark things lurk in the depths beneath the old cathedral. I've seen plenty of evils in my travels, but this makes my journey through the dragon wastes look like a walk in the park. Everything. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Your arrival brings hope to my old heart. Everything started the disappearance There's of our no bishop. I fear he's been dragged into the catacombs deep below the church. I and I don't know what caused the desecration of that holy place. That enigma is yet to be solved, you and you're the only one who can dark do it. Just remember to be careful. Few who ventured in the dark cathedral. made their way back. All right. We didn't need him to reread the entire first paragraph as well. And he charges. Whoops. Okay, up and down to see your health and your mana. Right. In order to move up and down, you use the left analog stick, not up and down on the arrows. Those actually open something completely different. Okay. So 2k for an extra card slot. Again, we cannot afford that. So. I guess we just go straight into the dungeon. The Cook. The Anti-Pope. I think I fought him in Assassin's Creed. Okay, that's cute. Even the ducky has a spike color. I mean, it seems fairly quick to get to him. I mean, only two levels to reach Satan? We could even use the mechanics different from other hack and slash games. If you're playing this for the first time, pay attention to the tutorials so that you can have the best possible experience. Good luck in the paper dungeons. Nice to see that it quickly loads as well. I am the sword that splits darkness. Okay, use the, I guess, left stick to move. Use the left stick again to select objects. You can interact with objects in your light radius using triangle. Okay. So it's right stick to aim. Makes sense. To interact with important objects, hold triangle. And there's another nice little touch. They actually realize I'm playing this with a PS4 controller, and they're putting the button prompts appropriate as opposed to the X of an Xbox. Okay, now how do you cl Okay, so just hover over that to collect stuff. It's always nice to see a game. Okay, so as long as that's over and we attack them automatically, okay. So far we haven't used any of the card mechanics. Use the reticle to choose a target with your character auto attacks, right? And auto attack is slow. Each hit damages one heart. Click or hold X on target to attack faster. When engaged with monsters, use the thing to retreat. So how far can I attack them from? I don't actually even need to be close. That's good to know. He's got range. Okay, so that's about as far as it can go. Okay. 
and it's not guaranteed to hit either. Icons at the top represent points of interest on this level. This icon is revealed when you're getting near. Okay, so look out for green check marks. Okay, so he will continue to automatically attack even when that purple glow is gone. Ah, our first card. I don't speak whatever that language is. That looks like some type of rune, I don't know. Spell cards consume mana when used, right? Press square to use selected card. Use, I'm assuming, left and right stick, or L1 and R1 to change selected card. And only be used if you're targeting an enemy unit. Mighty Blow. Might as well equip it. You can use usable cards by selecting them with left and right. When you, okay, they're just popping everything up. A lot of tutorial. View your cards by pressing up. You can scroll that window using, I guess, right stick. Rearrange cards between your card panel and slots by clicking or holding X and dragging the stick on them. Only equipped cards are active. Use... Ah, uh, they didn't do it completely. It says LB. That should be L1 and R1. To change active's card slot, press square to use a card. To unlock more card slots, visit the Sage in town. We have not unlocked the Sage yet. So we only have the one. And here's where we see that. What about upgrades? Can we do any upgrades yet with the hunt with 295? Mighty Blow. Upgrading costs a thousand. And it requires a moon rune. I have no unidentified cards. Alright. Heart points are your life. You lose them all, you'll die, of course. Heart points don't auto-regenerate. Use fountains and cars to recover health. You can always go back to the town and be healed by the healer. Well, I'm good on health right now, so I'm not going to waste that fountain. I might need it later. Alright, so... It doesn't seem like it takes too long to replenish, which is good. I'm curious if later down the road there'll be things that allow me to increase the recharge rate on cards. An adept bone collector. I don't have enough mana. Oh, right. It costs mana to actually cast cards. What we need is a mana fountain. Or we can just level up. That works too. Kill monsters and gain experience points to level up. Each time you level up, all monsters lose one heart. Okay, so I guess splash damage. Alright. Entry level... Every level gives you one point, which can be added to your hearts or to use on your mana. Use the character panel to select. So, I think I'm going to put that in mana. I'm not too worried about getting hit if I can do stuff from range. Every time you turn a level up point into a heart or a mana, the point of the opposite type goes into the cauldron. To collect the contents of the cauldron, talk to the barmaid. So that means that I have a heart point in the cauldron? Even though you lose the prizes, dying doesn't destroy level up points in the cauldron. Does not apply to roguelike mode. So if we were playing in roguelike, can see that the sanctity of this place has been fouled. So if we were playing in roguelike, we wouldn't get those back upon death. I think we'll probably do a couple runs in normal mode, and then as soon as we do that, we can go back to rogue mode and see what that's about. Zombies and some other monsters have poisoned hearts. On death, zombies explode with a shockwave, so stay far away from them. That poison everyone around. Hopefully, also, friendly fire hopefully gets the other skeletons and zombies. 
Lethally poisoned monsters are marked with a skull. Zombies cannot be poisoned, they are healed instead, so do not use poison magic if I get it. Um, how far can I be? Okay, I'm safe. Nope, that actually still got me. Poison damages you over time. Total numbers of poison damages shown below the heart orb. So I think we're about to receive three poison damage. When the demon glows, quickly click circle to shorten the poison duration. Oh, that's a time-based thing. So we can kind of, like, will ourselves out of poison. Notice the footprints you leave behind. They show the direction you came from and mark places you've visited. Oh, so nice. Golden footprints mean a corridor has been fully visited. Normal footprints, partially visited. No footprints, you haven't been there yet. Minimap will help you track all the points of interest on the level. Open it with a tab or scroll. I don't quite know what that would be on the controller. Maybe select? Select. I like that. Ah, a potion. I don't think I need to use that yet. I'm only three down. Item cards consume charges when used. You can charge them at the fortune teller or find charges in the dungeon. Nah, we're not quite going to use that yet. Okay, maybe I should have equipped that. Because we have a mini boss. Or an actual boss. Bosses are tough to defeat. Each one has multiple stages. The more stages a boss has, the more rewards he drops when slain. All boss stages are shown in the boss bar. Got it. Before each stage, the boss is immune. He is preparing a special attack and cannot be stopped, so make sure I'm far away. So when he's transitioning from one stage to the other, just get back. Okay, get rid of the ads first. Okay, he has range as well. I don't have enough mana. Right, I need more mana. I don't quite know where there's none left on the field. I am stuck, I am cornered, I have no way to escape. And I can't walk through him. Oh no. I don't have enough mana. Nope, we're dead. If only I had equipped a potion! I regret my actions and deeds. Oh, we actually killed him. That was lucky. Holy crap. With one health, I might die to a normal skeleton. There wouldn't be a way to equip that potion right now, would there? Yeah, let's just use it. Okay. We're not dead yet. We're back to full. We can keep going. I wanted that chest. I was not going to give that up. Oh, well, crap. I could have saved that potion. Another plus one mana. And that is everything on this level. Nice. So a lot of user-friendly mechanics in this game. Let you know where you've been. Let you know you've completely cleared a level. Close this game and progress deeper. Uh, it's risky. But I'm gonna take it. Flexoscope results. Whatever that means. We unlocked a new avatar. You know what? Sure, let's have a snake as an avatar. I don't quite know. Oh, there it is, square.
All right. Visit the healer to restore health and mana. Visit the barmaid to purchase cauldron content, which is that one level up heart we got. Visit the sage to do nothing. And visit the fortune teller to change item cards. Well, we only have the one anyway, so I think we're fine. Now we don't need to go back to town. Flexiscope unlocked. It's now available. With Flexiscope, you can choose the size of your game session. Depending on your preferences, you can divide your adventure into smaller or bigger games. Regardless of how much time you have, Flexiscope ensures fair balance of threats and rewards that the gameplay experience can be completed in the predicted time. I very much doubt you're going to be able to predict how long it's going to take me to do something. I'm going to pick something that says like five minutes. It's going to take me half an hour. You overestimate my skill. Since Flex Flexiscope learns your gameplay style and the time estimates for each subsequent session size should be more accurate, so after a couple runs it's supposed to be able to learn my gameplay style? That's a interesting mechanic if it works. Like they put a lot of faith in that. But sure, let's go for a 13 minute one. Now what exactly is the difference? So it's either 5 rewards versus 9, 1500 gold versus 3300. Well, I could use the extra money, so... I mean, it's not even that much longer either. Double gold for only a couple minutes more, we'll go for it. So it's 4 dungeons as opposed to 2. Very quick load times. Yeah, anything I can get that can restore mana is what I want to get. I was about to say what just went in the cauldron. Ingredients found in the dungeon are placed in the cauldron and transformed into prizes. Ah, that's what the barmaid does. To collect the contents of the cauldron, talk to the barmaid, right? Beware, when you die, you lose a prize that's stored in the cauldron. Mana and heart points are preserved in casual and normal mode. So, whatever we just picked up is going to be there when we go back to town unless we die. Some armored monsters are protected by shields. Damage a shield by tapping circle. Monsters are immune until their shields are destroyed. Some shields are magical and can reappear after being destroyed. So. A lot of tapping mechanics. There's tapping to get rid of poison, and tapping to get rid of shields. Definitely involved. They want to have you constantly doing stuff, which is nice. I don't know if that's a, another boss, or if that's just... Well, I've got no mana, so I can't really do that attack anymore. What I desperately need is a way to get mana back. You'll have enough mana. But can I just like tap circle on the guys anyways? No, that doesn't do anything. But I'm doing a good job of avoiding the arrows. This dude is like a stormtrooper, hasn't managed to hit me once. Well, there he goes. Sajay King, he is not. I want to kill the archer first, he's the biggest threat. No. Archer, you. I am playing a risky game right now. And thankfully there is a cauldron, or a... Right, shield, okay. There is a mana pool nearby, I can get that. So I'm not too worried about losing too much health here. Uh, what? 
Oh, right, boss. Multiple stages. Man, I would mana would be so nice right now. It is a little slow going at start. I feel like if I had actually gone back to town, maybe I could have gotten another card. Sped things up, maybe some more mana. Alright, go for you again. There we go. Okay, boss dead. And my mana's restored. Awesome, there we go. Alright, so what I'm learning is conserve your mana as much as possible. Save them for boss fights. The Shadow Sword grants an extra attack against an additional opponent in range. Artifact cards possess powerful passive effects but lock some of your mana when equipped. Okay, so it's going to lock some of my mana. I've got seven now. What's it going to knock me down to? Is it going to cost six or is it going to put me down to six? I think that just put me down to one. Yeah, I've got only one mana. That cost me six to equip. Is that worth it? I mean, on the one hand, I can do double attacks now, which means... I don't have to wor worry too much. Oh no, that's not double attacks. I think I misread that. Let me look at that card again. Grants an extra attack against an additional opponent in range. Oh, so it's only good against enemies if they're close by. And like hitting two enemies at once, not double attacking the same enemy. Well, I don't know if I want that, then. Going against mobs, sure, but individual enemies, no. Gargoyles have stone hearts. They're immune to elemental effects, poison, fire, and ice. When gargoyles turn to statue, they heal. So make sure I kill them before they do that. Don't give them time to heal. I don't necessarily trust these coffins. I feel like eventually one of these, like an enemy's gonna pop out of one. Oh, plus one. More mana, please. I'm begging you. I like that. Nice, nine. So we could just leave the dungeon immediately. We don't need to walk all the way back as long as we've discovered it. After you take the stairs down, you can re-enter the level from the back by clicking on the right side of the level. You can always go back to town from the cross-cut screen, even between levels. So from here, we can go back to town? Right, there it is up top, circle. But the thing is, do we continue to gamble? Well, I just accidentally did that. Apparently if you press up enough times, you'll go back to town as well. Oh, so you do not need to restart once you're done. If you if you go back to town, you don't necessarily need to restart. That was my one fear. Okay, so it's not terrible. Going back to town is just to pick up whatever you need. We did level up too. Thank the heavens for hearing my prayers and sending us a champion of light. I shall aid you in your struggle to the best of my limited abilities. Come to me should you need remedies for ailments of body or soul. Yet you should remember it is no small task to face the legions of evil. You must shield yourself with faith. There is no better protection against darkness 
If you allow yourself to falter, you shall become defenseless and even risk losing your immortal soul. I saw what happened to those who went astray in their spiritual vocation and... Uh, no, it's better not to dwell on such things lest yeah, they become darkness tainted. overcome us. I've been busy too while you were away. The fortune teller is teaching me her craft, and I don't mean her skill with guards. It's called prize brewing, and it's the art of producing powerful magical elixirs that someone like you should find useful. All you need to do is collect the ingredients. I'll take care of the rest. I don't quite now, know what I this collected. This is the magical stuff I'm talking about. So there are some rules. First, the more ingredients I mix, the greater the potion's power will be. Second, you can drink it and enjoy a little magic anytime you want. But the process will get more expensive each time. Third, if monsters slay you in the dungeons, the potion will weaken. It's because I'm making them just for you, so they have to be magically linked to your essence. Okay. I think I understand that. Just craft, just get as many crafting mechanics as I can, and the more I die, the less effective they'll be. Few living souls venture into the depths under the cathedral, as this is the realm where the dead rest, or at least should be resting. Countless warriors, men of the cloth, mages, and even kings of old were buried there with troves of gold and gems. I'm gonna loot it all, the too. The dead are now restless. Quickened by some unholy powers, they are haunting the corridors like wild animals, and their courage, virtue, and talents have been replaced with mindless violence. Ending their painful existence will be an act of mercy, if you ask me. Now, what is this down here? Okay, it's just an encyclopedia on the enemy, a monsterpedia. So you got normal skeletons and hardened skeletons. Listen for a while. Greetings, traveler. People call me the fortune teller. I'm pleased to see there are souls courageous enough to visit a place like this and stay. In truth, I came here recently myself, <clears throat> as I had to leave the royal capital. I am certain you have already heard about me and my excellent skills from the lovely barmaid I'm tutoring. Believe me when I say you will find my craft most useful in your adventures. Feel free to talk to me should you need any assistance. The townsfolk are good but simple people and know little about the arcane. That sage may be an exception, but his wit, not to mention his social skills, are clearly dulled by age. <laughs> We're all lucky that cranky old men tend to be harmless. See, these old people over here, they don't know nothing about magic. I can sell them anything. I just con them all. Cards are my specialty. They represent a novel approach to magic, offering a superior alternative to clunky weaponry and verbose spellcasting. Unfortunately, new things are often frowned upon, even more so in quaint places like this town. Can you imagine not so long ago those people traded with a local blacksmith? This is so Middle Ages. <laughs> no wonder he went bankrupt. But let's get back to business. Cards are universal magical items which can manifest properties of weapons, spells, and other artifacts. Some consume magical essence once used, but they can be recharged using objects found in the dungeons or with my help at a reasonable price. Yeah, we've only Just used like one potion. Cards, the trick is to find the right combination of magical properties that gives you the best advantage. Right, so we've only used up one. Whoops. Charge card. Well, why does it say zero of zero? We should have one potion, like, usable. All item cards are fully charged. Unless, I guess, when we picked up a new potion, it replaced the old one? That might have been what happened. I keep wanting to press up and down on the D-pad, but it keeps bringing up my... my profile. 
Well, we need to level up anyways. More mana. I'll All right. Open my next in in a warmer climate. Jungle, maybe. What is the deal with the cauldron? We've got two life tokens, I guess, and five mystery prizes? The magic in cauldron increases every time you find an ingredient in the dungeon. I've been busy too while you were away. Oh no, we've already heard about that. I guess I'll collect the 500 bucks? Because we need 2k anyways in order to get another, uh, another card slot. Do you wish to collect the cauldron prizes now or wait longer and risk losing them? Each time you collect prizes, the price of the cauldron increases. When the hero dies, unbought prizes are lost. Oh wait, no, it's gonna cost me 500 to collect the prizes, not give me 500. Well, that's a completely different thing. Because I need another 200 to buy another card slot. Stay and listen for a while. Uh, I might gamble. Missed me already? You know what? Let's gamble. Let's go for one more floor. See if we can't afford another slot. Break his shield. Wait, hold on. Break his shield. Isn't it circle to break shield? Oh god, he's getting too close. I'm about to be poisoned. Got some sort of trophy for that. Adept Survivor. Oh no. I'm about to die right- this is a terrible choice. I should not have gambled. This is terrible. There's too many poison guys next to me. Ah, oh, there's two more chests on this floor, too. Wait, hold on, I might have potion. I've got potion, right? I do. Desperate times. Now, how do you use those? L1 and R1. Okay. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're not near death. We used up most of my mana, but we're fine. Yeah, those poison guys. Jeez, these gargoyles jump around like fleas. We're fine now. <laughs> hey, Tui, how are you doing? I'm not much for gambling, but sometimes it comes in handy. Bloody armor is going to take us down from 10 to 5. Recovers hearts lost in battle. I don't know if I want to equip that right now. Like, I feel like the double attack might be useful. I'm kind of second-guessing that now. Because I am ending up with a bunch of instances where there's multiple enemies at once. I think I'm fine with only four mana. Again, it's the gamble. Alright, we have enough, though. We can go back to town and buy another card slot. That's what we're gonna do. Go to the old man. are capable of experiencing only the most base effect, hunger. Who can imagine a less meaningful existence? Their bodies are still decomposing, so it's recommended to keep them at a distance as the gases they produce are of the deadliest kind. Fortunately, they also smell awful, which serves as a warning. 
Just like the stench of charlatanry emanating from the fortune teller's wagon. Eh, the terrible smell just means it's working. So what were you streaming tonight, Tui? You said you, you already beat Children of Morta, so I assume you're not going back to that. What game were you playing? Who's got the... Oh. There it is. Unlock card slot for 2k. Which means we're up to 4 now, although we don't have a 4th card to use. Next one's gonna cost 5. No, I can see your future is very grim. Now we could charge that potion back up. Although I think we're fine with only three potions. We don't need a fourth. More into mana. Close to the sun. I can't say I've heard of that before. But it's a horror game? Now horror survival? Horror horror survival or just plain horror game? Oh, missed me already? What? So really nothing new in the cauldron aside from that one life we got. We can almost afford it. No, I can see your future is very grim. How much is it gonna cost a charge? Hundred dollars? No, I think we're fine. We can go back in the dungeon. Right, wrong thing. I had the wrong thing selected. I almost wasted a potion. It feels like Bioshock without guns. Oh, you know, I think I've actually seen that before. I might have actually seen like the uh, poster for, or not the pro the banner for that game. Wasn't it, like, free on PS4 at one point? Oh god. Those archers are really kicking my ass. You don't know. I feel like it was at some point. Oh my god. They're just tearing right through me. As opposed to the last archer, this one's actually got good aim. Oh no, what's killing me are the gargoyles. They're doing more than one damage at a time. After him. Go after the archer. How do you force your character to select certain things? Prioritize the archer. I'm stuck. I'm dead. Oh, there goes that. A scale level 4 novice warrior died in maze of depth 56. I was just overwhelmed. Collect your tombstone to retrieve your lost goods. Well, we didn't really have much on us anyways. Each time you die, your lost goods will be moved to the new tombstone. So just keep getting pushed further and further back. It, yeah, either Close to the Sun was free on PlayStation or free on Twitch. I know it was free at some point somewhere, though. Can We need health. When evil strikes Bring us back to life, dungeons, please. It takes a lot of my effort to deliver your soul from the clutches of darkness. Death always takes its toll, so any equipped cards remain at your grave, and so will grant you no aid until you retrieve them. Also, some ingredients collected in the arcane cauldron perish, as spells and elixir are mere tricks in the light. Yeah, we lost five ingredients there. 
But how was Some the game, though? Some things cannot be explained. They must be believed. Many scholars devoted their lives of prayer, hoping for illumination and understanding of the nature of the soul. But very few succeeded. In the scriptures, they usually compared spiritual links to threads of yarn being cut and souls to little pots being broken. Then again, holy men are not very skilled when it comes to similes, as their virtue stems from other qualities. Hmm. Death rage for a hundred thousand? Far out of my range. You're not a, not a fan of horror games, but you're still playing it. Well, was it a, uh, a Steam Gifts win, or is that why you feel like dedicated to play it, or what? All right, let's find our little tombstone among the many zombies. We can't get that. We got no powers. They're like. Five zombies. Okay, we might be able to sneak past. We got it. Oh my god. We did not deserve that. No. Go after this archer. I am seeing a slight issue. My guy is targeting random enemies. He's not targeting what I want him to go after. Son of a... Bitch. How can I help you? What I need to do is r just bum rush it. Bum rush it over there. And each time I die, apparently things are going to cost more and more money. So, if I can't do this properly, it's going to end up costing thousands. Okay, just rush over there, get the tombstone, get the power. There. Kite them. Kite them around. This might be what we have to do. I'm not proud of it. Oh my god, it's terrible. Yeah, the achievements are just popping off on this game. A new achievement every two, three minutes. I hate these archers so much. They got better range than I do. There's another chest somewhere, too. I could have sworn I... Oh, there it is. I was already this way. How did I miss it? Uh, I don't think I actually collected that. Yeah, I accidentally went down the stairs. Oh, goodness. We're not doing well. Now, what did I just collect? It was some sort of... flask. Not there. Alright. I feel like we don't want to go back to town, or we don't want to do another run. We want to go back to town. How much is it going to cost now to oh, visit the cauldron? Missed me already? Oh, it's still only 500? It's not terrible. I was expecting it to have gone up in price immensely. Might as well collect the prizes, find out what this is about. Sure. So it's going to stay at 500. It's not going to go up in price according to that. It said it's still going to be 500. These creatures are made of stone, which makes them extremely resilient to elements. Fire, frost, or poison cannot harm them. Their abilities are fascinating. When harmed, they petrify and lie in slumber for thousands of years, slowly regenerating. 
All adventurers should be warned that statues may not be what they seem. Some scholars claim that gargoyles carry a trace of demonic blood, like that charlatan woman, although it's much more obvious in her case. So I just need a holy spell, or maybe a phoenix down, that'll just instantly kill him. Anything else I can How buy? Can a golden key is 25, death rage is 100. I, can see your future is I almost feel like I kind of need to charge up my potions now. Because I just blew through almost every single one of them. Yeah, put it back to max. Also, oh, it was a Steam gift win. I can't even remember the last time I got one on the site. Then again, I'm not really entering much on Steam gifts. I enter maybe one thing a month. Typically around the time they do those, uh... The Humble Monthly Bundles. Ah, oh, here we go, new boss. Nope. Attack them both, attack them both. Here's what I mean about the tons of achievements in this game. It's close range. Take the gamble, just be as close as possible. So far, so good. I like that. I'll take more health. I just need a way to deal with the archers better. Like, better range. Or maybe give me the ability to attack while I'm moving. if I want to use my other potion. Regenerates mana over time. Absolutely equip this thing. This is what we've needed. And you know what? Screw the other one. Screw the other artifact. That costs way too much. It's not worth it. Get rid of this thing. Regenerate mana over time. That's what we've been looking for. Now the hack and slash truly begins. We're no longer limited to just a slow attack. Take phase two. Easy peasy. I'm not even paying attention to how fast it's regenerating mana. As long as it's doing it, I'm fine. I'm happy. Yes. Cleanser. Now the game begins. We got mana regen. In fact, I might even be able to level that up. Upgrades. How much does it cost? It costs a thousand. Well, we got the thousand, but we don't have the runes. We need moon, death, and... We need two death and a moon. How do you get runes? One mana point every five seconds. Not bad. Every two seconds, we're going to manage to upgrade it. So we need to find a way to get runes. What is this? You have no unidentified cards.
don't in let's go back to town before we go deeper I feel like there might be a reason you have any oh, runes for sale maybe is very grim. Well, you can give me back one of my potions fuse runes we can do that but we can't buy runes yet stay and listen for a while identify card oh, missed me already Nothing in the cauldron. Of the medical emergency. So there's no ah. shop yet. Too many help. No, I can see your few. So I'm assuming we have to go deeper before a shop opens up. All right. Now, I'm very curious. That was supposed to have been a 13-minute run. How long did that actually take us? Yeah, nothing to do back in town. So. Keep going deeper. 